Welcome to our webinar, first in our leadership webinar, Chosen to Lead. This webinar is presented by our Executive Director, J.C. Bowman. We'll be changing the presenter to him at this time. If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or the questions tab. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our leadership series. This is part one of our four-part series on leadership. Today's topic is chosen to lead. Leadership is a privilege. It is also a responsibility. It demands risk, and it also demands accountability. So if you're here tonight to listen, you are a leader. So we're glad to have you, and we welcome you to our series. Our agenda tonight is real simple. We have a we have a couple of topics that we need to focus on. We're going to look briefly at a few of the key areas of leadership. Uh, this is a snapshot of areas that we will continuously address. I think will be beneficial to you in your role as an educator leader in your school or within our organization. We're going to look at becoming a leader, the five levels of leadership, the foundation of our leadership and the different personalities, how, how to get the job done, the power of partnerships and making good decisions. You are chosen to lead. Becoming a leader. We define leadership simply. It is influence. It's up to you to define the leader within you. Leadership is influence, nothing more and nothing less. It is not dependent upon a title or any position that you might hold. True leaders attract, and they also empower others. Harvard Business Review recently validated that definition. Their research points out that leaders must inspire and motivate. Leaders must have high integrity and honesty. They must be able to solve problems and analyze complex issues. They must communicate effectively and they must also be able to collaborate and promote teamwork. You will find throughout leadership that teamwork is probably one of the highest areas and subjects that will be addressed by people as they develop their own leadership skills. So if you don't like people, remind yourself, no man is an island unto himself. One of the great researchers of the area of leadership, probably the most famous person that I can think of, is John Maxwell. John Maxwell has identified the five levels of leadership. And uh, he explains the degree of influence as it increases over the length of time, should drive you up the priority list, should make you more of a leader. So he defines uh, the very first step of leadership, your position. People follow you because they have to. Permission, that's the relationships. People follow you because they want to. Production, people follow you because of what you have done for the team, the school, or the organization. The next step, step four, people follow because of what you have done for them. And then finally, the respect. People follow because of who you are and what you represent. We believe personnel determines the potential, vision determines the direction, work ethic determines the preparation, and leadership determines the success. And as you start your leadership journey, remember, this will be a long process. The goal is more important than the role. Five levels of leadership is going to break down into a couple different areas. You're going to really recognize the higher you go, the longer it's going to take. The higher you go, the higher level of commitment. The higher you go, the easier it is to lead. The higher you go, the greater the growth. You never leave behind the level in which you are. As a leader, you won't be on the same level with all of your people. And finally, you must work to carry other leaders with you up the steps. 
To summarize, leadership does not come from the title. In fact, being named to the position is only the first of the lowest of the five levels. Every effective leader achieves to become more than a boss people are required to follow. You must master the ability to inspire and build a team that produces not only results, but also future leaders. So as a reminder, the five levels of leadership are position, people follow because they have to, permission, people follow because they want to, production, people follow because of what you have done for the organization, for people development, people follow because of who you, of what you have done for them personally, and the, five, the fifth step, personhood, is the pinnacle of leadership as people following you because of who you are and what you represent. The last point, if you are not afraid of hard work and you have a willingness to learn, anyone can rise to a higher level and be more effective in their level of leadership and thus have a greater impact in society and in your chosen field of, of education. The foundation of our leader, leadership recognizes different personalities. And as leaders mature, they understand the differences in people. Every leader learns that people are different, there is value in that difference, and personalities will not change. Uh, you, you know this, you've seen this before, you can try to change people, but you'll end up being frustrated. The great thing that leaders often learn is to surround themselves with people who are strong where they themselves are weak. Every leader must learn these basic, as leaders mature, they, they, they better understand the differences in people. They recognize that those who follow them are motivated by different causes. They respond to different ideas and they get excited for different reasons. Every leader must learn these basic personality differences that exist within their school and within their organization. Good leaders recognize the influence, the personalities, and the other gifts of their people, and they empower those people. They read people, and then they lead people. The same basic idea in different personalities has been identified through various researchers across the spectrum. Uh, Maxwell has, has his four types, which are bolded at the top. Uh, there's also personal profiles, Smalley and Trent, Larry Crabb, Alessandra, all these people in this category here, uh, in this category here, are people who have studied research and researched the different personalities that are within an organization. Um, and they come up with different titles. They're all basically the same. They're, I've listed a few of them on the slide here. There may be more and there may be less, but we all certainly present possess traits of all of them. Some of these traits, for example, may be, you may be goal-oriented and you may act quickly, maybe people-oriented, you're energetic and inspiring, you may be team-oriented and you're a steady worker, you may be numbers-oriented and that's where you plan and you organize. All of these components are what lead together to make a, a um, strong team and they're able to do that. And a good leader recognizes the difference of personality types. And uh, for yourself, you'll recognize that you both have primary and secondary types of these personalities. So you may be some of e a little bit of each, but you're definitely going to be stronger in one area over the other. Uh, first, know yourself, then know others. That's a good, good line of advice. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Nobody has any more time than anybody else. We make time for the things that are truly important to us and we manage our time accordingly. That is why teamwork is so critical to our mission at our schools and within our organization. Our ability to build and maintain human relationships is the single most important factor on how we get along in every area of our life. And looking at the slide, I want to go back to this and take a little bit, I want to take a second with this. The goal is not to look good, hold meetings, and survive. The goal is to produce. Hard work is necessary to accomplish our objectives, but hard work alone doesn't guarantee results, and activity doesn't always equal accomplishment. We must learn to work smarter, 
not just harder. A few of the proven practices for getting things done through people in your organization or at your school are right here. What talks about gets done. Leaders must first listen to the people when they talk. What, what do they continue to discuss? Whatever it is, that is where their interests lie. Excellent leaders create an environment through words that send the message to their people. The message involves whatever your highest goal or mission is. Words create feelings and attitudes, and feelings and attitudes are what move people to take action. Think about a company that is trying to sell a product. They will try to move people to buy their product. The effective, the effective companies are the ones who have created a simple message that everyone can remember. Things like, just do it from Nike. Um, you, you've, you've probably heard a few of the other slogans that you've remembered. But these are the ones that, that are able to, to help you understand uh, about what gets done, and it helps you to communicate your message to the folks within your organization internally as well as externally. What gets trained for gets done. People need to be equipped in order to perform a task well. Most people fear getting personally involved in an organization because they lack confidence, and they lack confidence because they lack training. I often tell people, example, in a school setting that, that if they would hold a parent training seminar, that they're likely to get more parent engagement uh, at their school than whether they just come in and say, we have a parent conference, you can come in on this date, and we're here for you. Uh, you need to train people, and so a lot, of, a lot of those activities and have expectations. And then finally, what gets measured gets done. The poet Henry Longfellow wrote, we judge ourselves by what we feel capable of doing. Others judge us by what we have done. As a leader, you will soon find that people define what's important by what you take time to measure. Every day of his adult life, Ben Franklin, one of our founding fathers, set aside time to examine two very important questions. The morning question he asked himself every morning when he woke up, what good shall I do today? The evening question as he went to bed, he reviewed, what good have I done today? That's a pretty good strategy. You need to look at what can you do and what have you done. Those are two things. So measure yourself, even if it's just simply reflecting on the day. The power of partnership. As I said earlier, no man is an island unto himself. We need to work with others, whether that's other members of our team, if that's other teams that are linked with other groups, or if that's other organizations working together, but at the end of the day, we understand as the challenge escalates, the need for teamwork elevates. The strength of the team is impacted by its weakest link. And that is true in leadership as well. What you're going to find with yourself, as I've, as I've tried to stress throughout this, is that you have to surround yourself with people to, to make your weakest areas a strength. So you surround yourself with people who are capable of doing things that you yourself cannot do, as long as it's within your mission. Four core requirements that you want to make sure that you manage with power of partnership is sacrifice, time commitment, personal development, and unselfishness. Remember this. When you join with a partnership to tackle an issue, it's going to require a sacrifice, and it's going to require time. And, it's, and as you do that, you will find that you will also learn new skills that you yourself may not have known that you had in there. And the willingness is to be unselfishness. Uh, we, get, we get things done more, uh, more effectively when we, when we quit trying to just assume that we have to get credit for it. And we know this inherently, and we know it to be true uh, ourselves. Every time we see that, more things get done when it doesn't matter who gets the credit. So try to be unselfish. When you, uh, when you work with a team, and eventually you will get the recognition that you're entitled to. Successful partnerships are built on a lot of 
a lot of areas, but one of the things that you have to be willing to do is step back and look at the big picture. I think that's a lot of times, and today is uh, election day, and uh, that we notice that the politicians often miss the big picture. And, and so they're dealing with one particular issue at a time, but they fail to see the big picture. So look at the big picture, look at the, you size up the situation and determine how that should play out, and make sure you have the resources to accomplish the objective that you're trying to set out to accomplish. You also have the right players. Oftentimes, for example, when we do conferences and, and other activities, we bring in folks to help us and assist us uh, to supplant. So we bring in other speakers on, on topics that are very important. Make sure you have the right players in your partnership. You also have to eliminate your personal agenda. And so uh, if your goal is, again, to get credit for something, you must recognize that you probably are not going to get that. Uh, until the end of the project. And finally, when, when you do all this, everyone accomplishes together. And then you move to that higher level and you're able to be successful in your accomplishments. accomplishments. Making good decisions. Our inability to make decisions is one of the principal reasons that leaders fail. Deficiency in decision making ranks much higher than the lack of specific knowledge or technical know-how as an indicator of leadership failure. I want to repeat that. Your deficiency in decision making is higher than the lack of knowledge or technical know-how in leadership failure. Successful people make the right decisions early and they manage them daily. To manage your time more effectively, I strongly urge you to read Stephen Covey's high-level high book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's a book that's, that's been on the market for 25 years, and I certainly think that you should try to get that book and make it a permanent part of your library. But the first step in successful decision-making is to prioritize your decisions. Ask yourself which decisions on your list will produce the highest payoff for your mission. Evaluate the, the terms of your investment in time, resources, and energy. On a scale of one to three, rate each item on your list as follows. Number one, the most important. Number two, somewhat important. And number three, the least important. According to researchers, people who use goal setting effectively suffer less from stress and are able to concentrate, show more self-confidence, and seem to feel happier. Applying the same scale, you rate each decision based on its relevance to your goals. On a scale of one to three, rate each of them as follows. One, the most important. Two, somewhat important. And three, the least important. So as you look, you ask yourself the same question. Which decisions are essential to your goals? To answer this question, you may need to review your primary job responsibilities, as well as remind yourself the critical success factors driving your performance as a leader. Every item on your list should have two rankings, one for potential payoff and one for alignment with your goals. Now ask yourself, which of these issues must be handled by me and no one else? All entries totaling two or more above are matters that probably require your attention. Those that are two or below should, should be delegated to other staff or volunteers. Too often, leaders fall into traps, causing them to make faulty decisions. They are blind to flaws in their methodology or gaps in their thinking. At this point, every item on your list should have the two rankings. You simply focus on the remaining decision and ask yourself, which of these issues must be handled by me and no one else? And more than likely, you will determine which, many, which of them can be delegated to your other staff to help lighten your load, which then makes you more effective in what you're trying to accomplish. The DNA of good decision making. DNA evidence is the number one thing. You want specific facts that can be independently verified. Search for new information when possible or look at new insight, which may help you impact that decision. 
probe the basis for your belief. We make decisions based upon our assumptions. But those assumptions are sometimes uh, in, at odds with the reality. Take a hard look at your areas of expertise and honestly assess your knowledge. Watch for overconfidence in yourself and others when you venture outside those limits. Test your opinions by looking for information that challenges your belief rather than looking for information that supports your opinions. Number two, the observation piece. Direct experience or understanding of an issue is very important. Before deciding, picture the outcomes of your decision and mentally track the ramifications of your chosen course of action. Search for examples. Find others that have faced similar situations and have reached the same and, and have reached decisions. Evaluate their experience to better prepare for their own decision. When time allows, launch and assess a pilot project before you even commit to yourself to some to a long-term project. When time allows, you can gather the right information to make a good decision. Feedback. Feedback are impressions gleaned from asking others for the input about a decision. The most effective decisions flow from your ability to ask the right person the right question at the right time. As long as you know where to search for the relevant information and can verify the accuracy of what you learn, you will be well positioned to see all sides of an issue and make a sensible decision. I thank you for attending this conference, for this webinar. We thank you very much. This is the first in a series of four on leadership. Uh, you can find more about Professional Educators of Tennessee by going to www.proedtn.org. That's www.proedtn.org. My email is right here. I'm the Executive Director, J.C. Bowman. My email is jc.bowman proedtn.org. JC Bowman.